Hey guys, Kathy here from the uh, Hydrant Club Canine Concierge Transport uh, with no dogs in it. Um, my kids are all at home. I've done all of the drop-offs and I'm actually on my way uh, to a town hall event at City Hall. Completely dog, undog, undog related. Weird. But I wanted to do a very quick update. Um, there is uh, an incredibly active thread on the Hydrant Club Facebook page about uh, a little bit of a, a scare that thankfully turned out to be a, a bit of a false alarm um, from this weekend. So here's the context. On Sunday night, I get a salvo that someone has been um, essentially shut out of the Sunset Park dog area by someone claiming to be kind of official with or with the city or with the county saying that um, the area was closed uh, due to an outbreak, uh, possibly Parvo. So there were a number of things that didn't feel very right about that. So um, after, you know, trying to get a hold of some folks yesterday, finally got some information today. So here's the gist. The park is not closed. There's an area closed for overseeding, but has nothing to do with any pet health. There is no outbreak of Parvo in the city of Las Vegas. There is no distemper outbreak. Um, this is Parvo season. So there are some cases that vets have seen. Um, there are some cases of distemper that have been seen. But here's, here's what's important to know. Uh, and thank you, uh, Stacy Welling from the county who who took the time to actually chime in on the on the Facebook thread today and then actually took the time to call me and talk to me about the the efforts that the county is going to put forward to try to help educate people. So kudos to the county. Um, I, 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 I could not be more impressed with their responsiveness. So thanks to them for that. So here's here's the deal. We live in the in cities like Las Vegas and Phoenix and Scottsdale and many other cities that are very typically more um, rural. They're more rural and suburban in nature. And so uh, I've talked about many times before the challenges that prevent, presents from a training and behavior perspective, which is that you have dogs that don't have the necessary social skills to exist in a dense population environment. And you also have humans who don't have the necessary handling skills to manage their dogs in those environments. Well, there's there's some veterinary issue around it as well. So when you have dogs that are all of a sudden uh, thrown together in a very dense population environment, you have a higher risk of infection and contagion. Think of it this way, you know, I um, when I used to work in corporate environments and I worked in an office and I worked in an office building and I took a bus to work and I was at conferences and shaking hands and public restrooms and elevators, I got sick a lot. I got a cold a lot. Um, people come to work sick. They take the handle of the bathroom and they push it open and then you come and you touch the handle and people get sick. It's just, it's what happens. So. It is why vaccinating your children is important when you send your children to school. You, you need to protect against certain kinds of infection. Now, I am not an over-vaccinator. Um, my dogs personally happen to be vaccinated um, against a wider spectrum of things because my dogs are at higher risk. They meet an unusually large number of dogs. They travel a lot. They are exposed in lots of different places. As a result, I need to protect them from a lot of different things. By law, most cities, Las Vegas included, only require one vaccination by law, and that's rabies. So in the city of Las Vegas, you must vaccinate your dog against rabies. There is no law mandating that you vaccinate against anything else but it is good common sense if you are using any kind of public space. That would include a dog park, even just going to a public park with your dog, going to a public shopping area, going to a restaurant that allows you to bring your dog to the patio or even inside in some cases, going shopping and going to stores and other public areas 
where other people will have their dogs. It is important to protect your dog. So what are the key things that you should protect your dog for? Um, there's a handful that we require at Hydrant Club and that I think are just good common sense and most of the vets with whom I have spoken would concur. So beyond rabies, you also have Bordetella. Uh, Bordetella is something that you also commonly hear called kennel cough. It is an S upper respiratory infection. Uh, prominent. Uh, you get a lot of braxycephalic dogs, so dogs with constricted muzzles um, tend to suffer a lot from these uh, kinds of, of uh, infections. Uh, they are more susceptible. You also have distemper and parvo, uh, both of which uh, are seen here in, in this city. Parvo is a particularly persnickety uh, issue because it is a particularly hard virus to kill. It can lie dormant in soil for a very long period of time, for years even, and then reactivate. And one of the things that's been explained to me by a, a local veterinarian here is that, you know, we used to hear have very hot, very cold, very hot, very cold, very hot, very cold, and that was kind of the, the back and forth of temperature. And so a lot of viruses would die off well, now you have more temperate weather and you have these spikes of warm weather when there would normally be cold and then you have these bouts of rain. And so you have these viruses that don't really die off. And then every time it rains, they, they reactivate. Um, I was talking with someone who was with a veterinary hospital in Arizona and said any time a monsoon came through, you know, in the week or so after, they would often see a rise in parvo cases. So Parvo is particularly dangerous to very young dogs, uh, puppies, to geriatric dogs. Think of the populations of humans who are most at risk from things like the flu. Uh, people who have immune disorders, small children, young children who don't have fully developed immune systems, as well as the el elderly whose immune systems are sometimes compromised. So. When you think about vaccination and why it's important, it's not just important for your own dog, but it's also important in a group environment to protect those for whom these protections could be, it could be a life-threatening situation. Um, just because your dog is vaccinated against something does not mean that it will not contract that illness. This is also very important to remember. Uh, I know someone who had a young dog uh, that dog was fully vaccinated against Parvo, ended up getting Parvo from his own backyard. How's that for a kicker? Um, he tried bleaching, but the problem is when you um, uh, introduce bleach to organic material like dirt, it makes the, renders the bleach inert, so it doesn't actually do anything. So you just kind of have to rinse it away. Uh, he ended up moving so that his dog wouldn't, wouldn't get infected again. So, rabies, distemper, parvo, bordetella, those are the big ones. We are also now at Hydrant Club requ requiring canine influenza, and here's why. Um, I received a report from a colleague in Los Angeles who had received a report from the vet with which they work who had been given information from the Department of Health. So, it comes from a legitimate uh, health organization in Los Angeles. There is a dog that was imported from Asia in March of this year, and that dog was carrying the strain of in canine influenza, which hit Chicago last year. It's incredibly virulent. It's very, very, um, it, it, it passes very, very quickly. It's very, very contagious. It, I don't believe it goes cross species, so humans don't get sick from it, but uh, cats can also catch this same strain. Uh, over a thousand dogs, in the city of Chicago were impacted last year. I know a number of dog facilities that got shut down for days on end because they couldn't control the contagion. Because the problem is, is that the dog is most infectious in the first, I think, four days after it's been exposed when it is shedding the virus, but it is completely asymptomatic. So you have a dog that looks healthy and is acting healthy, but is shedding virus and contaminating all the dogs around it and then the dog gets sick and the only way to, to deal with it is like a 21 day quarantine, which is kind of a pain in the ass for everybody involved. So, um, 
I am now recommending to all members of the Hydrant Club that they get their dogs vaccinated for canine influenza. And so for members of the club, we've actually, there's a post, I've pinned it to the top of our Facebook page so that you can have that information. And, uh, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So no, no, there is no outbreak in the city of Las Vegas at present time. Um, there are cases of distemper, there are cases of parvo, but they are not widespread, it is not widespread contagion. There does not seem to be any centralized uh, area of infection or any large pool uh, of, of, of dogs that are infected. There is no single vet that is seeing a large spike. Um, you know, we are a very spread out valley. There's no single vet that sees everybody. So I think it, it would take a pretty serious contagion for us to see something of that level. Um, the dog parks of the city are open um, and there is no area that has been closed for any, any kind of contagion. Get your dogs vaccinated. If your dogs are not vaccinated or you've got some issue with vaccination, you can do a titer test. Uh, titers tests, uh, it's a blood test that uh, the vet can run that will test the antibodies in your dog's system to see if your dog is protected from specific illnesses. You need to run a titers test for each of the illnesses that I have mentioned, um, and those are spending. So um, if cost is not any object to you and you're really anti-vaccine, um, you know, by law, you still have to do you know, you still have to do rabies, so you're still going to be stuck doing that. Um, but apart from that, let's see if these people are going to let me over. Because I forgot I have to exit at Rancho. Come on, let me over. Look, people are letting me over. Yay, nice people. Uh, look at that. Thanks, everybody. Light drivers, who knew? Must be something in the air. Um, so, yes. So, uh check your dog's vaccination level, your vaccination records, make sure your dogs are vaccinated. And here's something really important to know. When your dog gets its vaccinations, it takes roughly a week for that immunization to take hold, kind of like human vaccinations. So once you get your dog vaccinated, don't run out and start exposing them to a lot of different dogs because if you expose them to a dog that's sick, they're not protected. At Hydrant Club, we mandate a one week waiting period between a dog getting its vaccination boosters and being permitted to come on property at Hydrant Club specifically for daycare and boarding. Uh, use of the park is a slightly different dynamic, uh, but that's what we require. The other thing to consider, when doctors do intranasal vaccines, that's where they squirt it up your dog's nose, or oral vaccines, which for some vaccinations can have a bit more efficacy, um, especially for us upper respiratory illnesses. But in those cases, um, you really want to wait at least seven days before you expose your dog to other dogs. Because don't forget, what are vaccines? Vaccines are live viruses. So, you know, I get a dog, an intranasal Bordetella vaccine. It sneezes on another dog. Oh, I can't turn on red. Oh, except from right lane. Look at that. I'm in the right lane. Um, so I'm going to turn on red. Because I can. Because it says I can. Uh, and the guy behind me is like, what's this bitch doing? Why don't you hurry up? But he didn't hunk at me, which was very nice. So, um, that's it. That's my spiel. And uh, if you've got any questions, um, I, I am not a vet. I am not a veterinarian. I don't play one on TV. I don't propose to play one on TV. Uh, but what I can do is provide you with access to information. If you've got questions, please send them along. You can post any comments um, to this video. Uh, I will do my best to see about getting you some information. And uh, I was thrilled to know that the county is actually um, you know, looking to provide some, some PSAs about vaccinations for your dog. So super cool. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for tuning in, you guys, and it... more later.